We're starting off this Monday on a new foot. On today's episode of Lockdown Coyotes, we're talking about a new ECHL affiliate, a new captain role for a Coyotes prospect, and the Coyotes' new director of player development. All that and more on today's episode of Lockdown Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. I'm going to be your solo host for today, Carl Pavlock. I do want to thank you for making Locked On Coyotes your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Uh, Today's episode may not be your first listen today. Uh, Unfortunately, we're getting it out a little bit late today. Uh, And unfortunately, my co-host Robin will not be joining me today. Uh, It'll just be me. I just wanted to get through some of the Coyote news stories that came up, you know, end of last week. We didn't have an episode, uh, so just kind of want to go through everything right now. This will be kind of a shorter episode, more just kind of, you know, things where eh, if we if we need to talk about them more, we absolutely will. But I, I don't really know how much it's going to be required for that. Uh, these are all kind of light and breezy stories, but we do have three of them to talk about. Um, and we'll get started. First one is one that we actually talked about last week. Uh, may have been last week. It may have been a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was initially a rumor that the Arizona Coyotes would be partnering with the Atlanta Gladiators. Um, and that became official. The Arizona Coyotes have a new ECHL affiliate. Um, personally, uh, I was a big fan of the Rush. Uh, I, I I liked them. I liked interacting with them on social media when given the chance. Um, but the Atlanta Gladiators are a great franchise. You really kind of love it. Uh, I actually did a short article on Five for Howling, uh, where I'm the editor, talking about them. They have had a, an interesting history. Uh, it kind of parallels the Coyotes' history in a lot of ways, which is why I really like this partnership. Um, the uh, Atlanta Gladiators, I almost said Thrashers there, but nope, that's a different team. Uh, so the Gladiators, they were a relocation team. They are originally in uh, Alabama, I think. Uh, let me just pull that up for sure. Uh Yes, so they were the original Mobile Mystics out of Mobile, Alabama. Uh, Mystics, it's it's fun file. It's spelled funny. Uh, it's M Y S T I C K S. So you know, like a stick. Um, great hockey pun name. Uh, I do find the ECHL teams tend to have, you know those kind of names uh, a little bit more than you would get from an NHL team. You're allowed to be a little bit punny in the lower leagues. I I don't know why that is. Um, But anyways, they relocate from Mobile uh, to the Gwinnett County area, become the Gwinnett Gladiators. Uh, That's 2003 to 2015. And then all of a sudden uh, they change names. They become the Atlanta Gladiators. So, it's kind of like the Coyotes um, in the sense that, you know, they are a relocation team. They change names from a a smaller name to a bigger name. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm not too sure about that just because I don't know the makeup, but they did change names. Um, they are not actually in Atlanta. Uh, the arena is located in Duluth, Georgia, according to Wikipedia. So, you know, it's not a, a perfect comparison for the Coyotes, but it's close. It's close. Um, ECHL teams are very important, especially for a team like the Coyotes. Uh, the big thing that we're going to be looking for for any kind of ECHL development program is how well do they coach goaltenders? 
because you do occasionally get some people who, you know, go from the ECHL to the AHL to the NHL. Um, I believe last season, both Boko and Cam Deneen played at one point in the ECHL. I cannot be too sure about Deneen uh, offhand, uh, but, you know, it is definitely, you know, a less common thing. Uh, but you do get a lot of players who you know, need a little bit of time. They're, they're not ready for the AHL yet, so they spend a couple of games in the ECHL, uh, maybe even a season or two, and they could still become NHL contributors. And, of course, goaltenders, they tend to spend a lot of time in the, in the ECHL just because there's only two spots for them. So I definitely think that the uh, Gladiators are a good team for the Coyotes to partner up with. They do have that history um, back when they were the, you know, Gwinnett Gladiators. They were a partner with the Coyotes. They have never won at all in the ECHL, but they do pretty good. Uh, last season, they had a 43-24-4-1 record, uh, made it to the playoffs before getting swept in the first round. Uh, hopefully, nothing like the Coyotes. Knock on wood for that one. Uh, but it's definitely something where, you know, the Coyotes have an ECHL affiliate. They, they definitely need that kind of relationship. Um, we have seen what having a good AHL affiliate can do for a team. Um, and I think that this should be a phenomenal partnership. Uh, like I said, we're doing a little bit short. So that's going to be all for that. But I do have a quick message. Um, and this is a very, very important message. Um are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's the worst that could happen? You end up driving below the speed limit? It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is that your reaction times slow way down when you're high. And you're not a, you can not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, so, you know, any form at all, eat edibles, plant, anything, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. And we're back, Carl Pavlock with Locked On Coyotes. Like I said, it's going to be a bit of a shorter one. It's also just going to be me. Fortunately, no Robin today. Uh, hopefully we'll get her next month since we're getting to the end of this month. Um, but she will hopefully be back soon uh, dealing with some personal issues, dealing with some work issues. Uh, it's tough uh, out there right now. And we got a couple more days in August. News is coming. And one of the big stories that I saw was definitely, it was a surprise, but it wasn't a surprise. Uh, the Arizona State University team, named their captains uh, over the weekend. And who'd have thought? We have another Captain Doan. Uh, Josh Doan has been named captain of the ASU Sun Devils, which is great if you're a person like me who likes ASU. Uh, fortunately, Robin's not here. She can't uh, poo-poo the old alma mater, um, but that's just fine. I'm more than happy to talk about Doan. Uh, all I can. Um, and, you know, he had a really successful first year with the Sun Devils last year. Uh, finished third in points with 37 total points, 12 goals, 25 assists. Uh, definitely wasn't, you know, as big of a goal scorer as the other two people. Uh, looks like Colin Thiessen and Matthew Copperant. Colin and Matthew, if you're listening and I mispronounced your names, I'm sorry. Um, they both had 19 goals and 22 respectively. So we're getting, you know, definitely offense from Doan, but he's not a main goal scorer, um, which I think is kind of what everyone expects of him. Uh, getting a captaincy early is just phenomenal for Doan. This is his second year with the program. Uh he potentially has, I think, two more um, that he's eligible for. So three years with a captain, you know, that that definitely teaches a leadership quality that you don't always get. Uh, you know, you're not going to get that if you're 
eh, you're still captain in, you know, if he was in juniors. But I think the NCAA program is really good because it does require just a lot. To be an NCAA athlete, you need to not only be an athlete, you need to be a student. Um, so I, I do think that this is a, a good move, a good sign of positive development in Josh Doan. Um, I'm actually, you know, curious to see how Doan develops because, you know, he missed his first draft year, wasn't drafted at all, goes pretty high in the, in his second and, you know, great. He he's looked good so far. Um, definitely as a player who I think that, you know, fans really expect a lot from him and not just because his last name is Doan, but because he was 37th overall drafted in the second round of the 2021 and, HL entry draft. He's shown quite a bit of skill. Uh, I know when I got to see him at the black and white scrimmage at the prospect development camp, he looked really good. Uh, I believe he was involved in a goal. Um, do not quote me on that. Uh, and unfortunately, I do not think they ever published the score sheet for that game. So I cannot be certain. Um, but still, just a phenomenal player. Um, we are actually getting ready to do our 25 under 25 list um, at 5 for Howling coming up. It's something that SB Nation sites do pretty much every year around this time. We're starting a little bit late just because uh, it's, it's been a rough off season, uh, But... I was surprised to see how high Josh Doan was on that list. Uh, I would need to check to see what he was last year, but I think he was kind of, you know, just like, oh, okay, he he is there, but he definitely looks to be, you know, growing pretty rapidly. One of the things that I always get people asking me is, when do you think Josh Doan is going to be ready for the NHL? And I'm going to be completely honest, I do not know. Um, he never really struck me as like the most skilled player. Um, even like him going in the second round, you know, early in the second round, it's still early in the second round. Uh, not too many players necessarily will make the kind of uh, Logan Cooley path, the Clayton Keller path, where you just do like a year or two at NCAA. I, I think he's kind of in it for the long haul. I think he's going to potentially need an AHL year. Like, don't expect Josh Doan to necessarily be, you know, lighting up the, you know, teams at, I was going to say at Hewlett River, but that's not the case. And he's definitely going to be lighting people up at the uh, ASU arena, the Mullet Arena, the best name for an arena. Um, don't expect him to be doing that in an NHL uniform anytime soon. Uh, at least I wouldn't. Um, if you want to kind of, you know, have that faith, sure. But I, I honestly think that he may be rushing the kid. Um, just kind of let him develop at his own pace. He is not his father. Uh, he plays a different game. And I don't know if he is necessarily going to have the same impact as his father did. Um, but, you know, for right now, he's doing everything right. And he will hopefully have all of the leadership qualities. Uh, but that is it for Doan. Uh, just like I said, going to be a short episode. Carl Pavlock, Locked on Coyotes. Um, this one is actually... A really, really recent one. Uh, this was announced earlier today. Uh, the Coyotes have named a new Director of Player Development, a very important role for the Coyotes, especially in the next couple of years. And it's a, it's a familiar face. Uh, Lee Stepniak will be returning um, as the Director of Player Development, like I said. Uh Here's a funny thing. Lee is only 39 years old. I did not know that. Uh, I thought he was a little bit older than that. Uh, not much older, but a little bit older. Um, he, I'm just going to read some of the press or press release. Uh, he comes to Arizona front office following a distinguished NHL playing career that spanned 14 seasons and 10 different teams, including the Coyotes, from 2009 to 2011. Uh, that's actually... Just before I started watching, uh, I may have caught uh, a little bit of Stemniak, uh, but not too much of him. Like 
2011 was kind of when I started following hockey, um, which I always feel is like very recent, but it, it's over a decade now. Um, so yeah. Um, and he had previously joined as hockey development strategist uh, on January 25th, 2001. Uh, so he has been with the Coyotes franchise, you know, as a player, he's been with the, the franchise now in, uh, most people were kind of putting him in the, you know, the data analysis, you know, hockey daddy data strategist uh, is definitely a very technical sounding department. Um, but obviously they were impressed with his work that, you know, it's been just over what, a year and a half. Yeah. And he is going from a strategist all the way up to director of player development. This is really, really big for the Arizona Coyotes. Um, the, the team is rebuilding. It's something that we talk about quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if you can listen to an Arizona Coyotes podcast and not hear them talk about the fact that the team is in the middle of the rebuild because it pretty much kind of shapes every single aspect of this team. Uh, the fact that they are in a rebuild, uh, it makes decision, you know, it influences the decisions of who gets sent where it influences the decisions of who gets drafted. Uh, when I look at some of the players that the Coyotes have acquired recently, like it's not only like, Oh, this is giving a good return, but this player's contract fits with what the rebuild timeline is. Um, so I do think that there needs to be just an exceptional focus on player development. Um, and, you know, we're kind of seeing that fall into place more and more because we have uh, a new director of player development. We just talked about recently the Tucson Rotorers new head coach um, earlier today discussing the ECHL affiliate. Those are all important pieces that we need to be looking at. Some of them are absolutely more important than others. Uh, I think, you know, Stephanie Exposition is is probably the most important of those three, but they, they are all equally important. They are going to be the people that the Coyotes rely on to develop their players. Because, I mean, honestly, it, it doesn't matter if you draft the best player. Um you need to properly develop them. Uh, an 18-year-old off the draft is not going to just immediately become an NHL player. Some do. Some absolutely do. And like looking at the Coyotes' current roster, Jacob Chikrin made that jump phenomenally fast. Um, but you know, it usually takes a bit of time. It's not something that happens right away. And I do think that this is going to be like kind of one of the low key, you know, key positions in the organization that we're probably not going to talk about. The director of player development uh, does a lot of things that, you know, most fans don't care about. Um, and most people in the media like myself don't necessarily see like sometimes, you know, prospect development camp, like they'll, they'll show video, of the players like talking to like nutritionists or going to like a grocery store and be like, this is kind of what you need. This is the diet you need to have to be a professional athlete. This is the exercise you need to have. That's all great. But all of these conversations are also going on behind closed doors. Um, and, you know, especially with a team like the Coyotes where they have so many prospects, it's, it's really about like tailoring those programs to each individual. And I think, you know, the great thing about having a player in that role is he knows what's what's there. He he's been there before. Um and you know that can definitely be beneficial. Uh I would like to think that every player, like if they have a chance to talk to, you know, a director of player development, no matter who it is, like they're gonna respect that. But being able to relate to a person, be like, hey, this is how things were when I was developing versus this is how things are now like that that should be like a major like point of ease like being able to talk to a person who's who you know has been there like especially if you're like an 18 19 20 year old kid like that means the world um you know 
and a lot has changed uh, since you know Stemniak was developing and you know began his NHL career. Like even from like I said, that's when I started watching when he was with the Coyotes. It was a decade ago. He was there before he you know, former two time NCAA All American at Dartmouth. Um, he has played in 911 career NHL games. That is definitely something where, like, that kind of pedigree, you're going to come in, you're going to listen. Like, especially, like, if you're a player like Logan Cooley. I can only imagine, like, Cooley being like, oh, hey, you went the NCAA route. That's what I'm doing. Tell, tell me as much as you can about, about doing that sort of thing. Um, you have 911 career NHL games. That's just insane. Uh, hopefully Cooley uh, has fewer NHL teams he played with. Uh, looking at this list, Coyotes, Blues, Flames, Maple Leafs, Bruins, Hurricanes, Penguins, Rangers, Jets, and Devils. Just insane. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's a bit of a shorter one. Uh, definitely a, a strong like player development episode. Uh, I didn't put that together. Um, until right now, uh, I, I knew that we, we I wanted to talk about Josh Doan. Uh, I knew that we need to get that ECHL news in. Uh, follow the ECHL teams. They're fun. They're, they're usually like the teams that are able to do like just crazy stuff that you don't necessarily get with um, you know, AHL teams or NHL teams because smaller markets, they're allowed to have a bit more fun. Um, and then, yeah, we just, with this, uh, director of player development completes the puzzle, uh, episode works surprisingly well together. Um, but that's going to be it for me. Um, if you are interested, you can follow the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Uh, so that's like Apple podcasts, uh, Stitcher, Podbean. We are also on YouTube. Um, if you are looking for something to listen to, after this, what I recommend is checking out as your second listen of the day, Locked On NHL, where Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. You can stay up to date from everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Uh, if you want to follow the show, you can follow it at LO underscore Coyotes on Twitter. We also have an Instagram. Um, you can follow me personally at Carl Pavlock FFH. You can also follow the blog at five, the word for the number howling the word um, on Twitter. Like I said, we are going to be doing our 25 under 25 starting probably Wednesday. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But anyways, Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for checking out the show. Uh, hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you're staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.